Hi, it's Joy. Welcome back to another Whimsy Stamps video. Today I am sharing a quick and easy watercolor project using the graduation stamp set. I chose to use the largest of the images for my focal point and later on come in with the two sentiments included in the stamp set. So this is a one stamp or one stamp set wonder. I chose to stamp this on watercolor paper. In this instance, I'm using Canson XL watercolor paper and I chose the rough side of the paper. So I am having to stamp the image twice using Versafine Onyx Black ink. And I use my Misty in case I did have to come back and do it twice. That way it's nice and lined up. That's just a little trick that you can use. And then I choose to use clear embossing powder. And by heat embossing over this image, I am creating a well or the emboss areas. So you're basically melting plastic onto the paper. So those little areas will control the water and the color from running all over the place. So if you like a loose or messier watercolor, you could definitely skip the embossing. But for me, I'm a little bit of a control freak and I don't like things going out of the lines very much. So I choose to emboss. And like I said, the Misty helps in all of those things in case you need to get two impressions. You're also going to notice that I heat not only the front part of, this, of the paper, but also the back. And that's because if you overheat an area, the embossing powder will actually melt into the paper. Like it will sink down and then you lose the well. So you need to distribute that heat gener generously. Now I am applying Vintage Photo down to my glass mat and I just added some water and then smeared that with my fingers so that we would get a watercolor effect and I am basically applying an underlay of color known as an underpa underpainting and I choose to, to heat set this so that I preserve some of those lines and nuggets because we're going to watercolor. Now you've noticed that I mopped up some of the areas that I didn't like with a damp uh, baby wipe or paper towel and that just keeps all that water or I'm sorry all that color from pulling where you don't want it and then like I said I do take my time to get this nice and dry um, so that it plays nice with the other colors that I'm going to add what's nice about vintage photo photo it's a nice sepia color and it's neutral, so you're not picking up, you know, muddy colors. So I decided to use my green um, Karen marker. It is called Grass, and I am dotting in some of the pigment onto the dry watercolor paper. And I'm just doing a small portions on each leaf because then I am going to come in with a very, very damp brush. And I say that. What I do is I dip my paintbrush into clean water and then I actually pinch that off so there's barely any water on it. Now before I did that you'll see that I took some clean water and I'm kind of wetting the area where it says you did it. That's because I'm trying to lighten up that uh, vintage photo a little bit. And then I move into doing the watercolor on the um, ivy part of of the image and again that's a very 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 dear like dry almost like I said dry it's not even damp really um, it's just enough to get the water moving and that's just a little trick if you want to keep your colors from bleeding all over the place again thankfully I have that uh, well now I'm moving into the land mass of the globe. So my idea for this was to have more of an antique look of a globe. So I am using the curry color and then again I'm coming in with a damp, almost dry paintbrush and I'm going to just color that in just a hair. I'm letting basically the paper and, and the marker do most of the work here. This is probably one of the easiest um, projects that you could do if you need a quick graduation card. I love that um, Jen from Dove Art 
who uh, illustrated this put in all of the hash marks so you knew exactly where your shading was so you don't really have to worry about you know your lights and your darks you just need to put in some paper you know some some paint and then keep going for this part i always like pops of red on all of my cards so i'm using lipstick red and it's another karen marker and along that middle book i am just putting some color towards the edge and then i come in with a damp brush and i you know just kind of spread that out so that it's lighter at the top where that little bow is around the um, diploma i didn't do anything but color that with directly with the marker i'm loving the shade of this um of this book i think it turned out really cool once i added some water now for the diploma itself i use cinnamon just along the edges and again i just kind of spread that up towards the top i'm not trying to get you know full coverage on this because i want to give it the illusion of being parchment that was the whole point of doing the underpainting of this was to give it the parchment slash vintage look for the two books i'm repeating exactly the same process as i did with the red and i'm using the indigo blue karen marker and i'm going along the bottom portions of the book and then I come in with a brush and I just lighten that up. I do think the one book gets a little bit too dark. So I come in with my baby wipe and I use a very clean corner to clean it up so it's a little bit lighter. Now you want to be extremely careful with that because you've already got red down. So you could have a mess where it's kind of, you know, turns purple. So be very careful if you decide to mop up colors um, in between. Down here at the bottom, I am using two different browns. The first one I think was, um, oh, sandstone. And it was a little too muddy. So I added a lot of water to that to lighten it up. And then I finally come in with sepia. So that's my final one. That's the one I'm dotting in now. And I'm just basically grounding this whole scene. And it really, it may not even have had to have been done since we already had the vintage photo down. I'm just trying to add a little bit of dimension to this card because it basically is a one layer card. Um, I love the way this came out. I thoroughly dried all of my inks and then using a blending brush, I brought in the vintage photo and I am just going around all four sides creating a vignette. There's no rhyme or reason to it. And what I do like about it is is it um, it layers nicely with the vintage photo that was already ink smudged so you've got all kinds of dimension and nuggets of color in there and that's just an awesome uh, feature of distress inks you could use any dye ink I just happen to have my distress inks available so you could try it with anything that you've got and see what it does um, it's just paper that's what my motto is so give it a whirl see what you can come up with if you like this project uh, please give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing, leaving us a comment. All of the products used will be in the description box below. Here I am using some uh, gouache from Arteza. This is the, um, what is this? Antique copper. And I am just watering that down and splattering that with a brush. I just like this again to add a little bit more masculinity to it and just a few more dashes of color. I mounted this onto a side folding black A2 card base and then I'm adding some gold gems. And here are some final looks at my cards. I think that they turned out really awesome. You'll have to let me know what you think. Um, again, until next time, keep crafting. Thanks for hanging out with us. We really do appreciate your time. Bye-bye.